Calcium ions are these very important minerals that exist essentially in every single cell of our body. And calcium ions play many different roles. They have many different functions. And one of the functions of calcium ions is it actually acts as a secondary messenger molecule in signal transduction pathway. So, for instance, as we discussed previously when we examined the phosphonosatide signal transduction pathway, we saw that calcium played a very important role. It acted as a secondary messenger molecule and the cell used the calcium to basically stimulate different types of proteins. The question is, what is it about calcium that actually makes these calcium ions such prevalent and good intracellular secondary messengers? Well, there are two facts, two things about calcium that makes them so prevalent. Number one is, our cells can actually easily detect even the smallest changes in calcium ion concentrations inside the cell in the cytoplasm. And number two is, calcium ions can actually form very strong interactions with proteins and we'll see why that's important and what that does in just a moment. So let's focus on number one. The smallest changes in cytoplasmic calcium ion concentration can be detected by the cell. So let's take a look at the following diagram. We have the outside of the cell, we have the plasma membrane of the cell, we have the cytoplasm of the cell, and this is the membrane of the ER. So this is the inside of the endoplasm reticulum, the lumen of the endoplasm reticulum. Now the first thing we should notice is if we compare the concentration of calcium ions on the inside, the cytoplasm, to let's say the outside or even the lumen, we'll see that inside the cytoplasm we have a very low concentration of calcium ions. The question is why? Well, to answer the question, let's recall a bit of general chemistry. So we know that when calcium binds to things like proteins, it creates, it creates conformational changes in the proteins and that exposes hydrophobic regions of the protein to the aqueous environment. And what that means is the calcium protein complexes, for the most part, become insoluble in that aqueous environment. And so what that can lead to is precipitation. So if there is a high concentration of calcium for a very long period of time in a cytoplasm, that can actually cause damage. That can actually lead to the precipitation of many different types of proteins within that cytoplasm. So during steady state conditions inside the cell, there is a very low concentration of calcium, about 100 nanometers, and that's much, much smaller than the outside concentration. And this is because calcium ions can readily bind to the negatively charged regions of proteins forming insoluble complexes that can be harmful to the cell. Again, when the calcium binds to the protein, it usually exposes hydrophobic regions of the protein. And we'll see why that's important in just a moment. But if that continues to happen for a very long period of time inside the cytoplasm, that can be harmful. And so what the cell actually does is it uses these special membrane pumps we call the calcium ATPases to create electrochemical gradients to basically pump these calcium ions and store the calcium ions away from the proteins inside the cytoplasm. So we store these calcium ions in the endoplasmic reticulum. And when we actually want to use the calcium ions, we have these membrane channels not shown in the diagram that can allow the movement of these calcium ions from the lumen into the cytoplasm of the cell. So we see that uh, this is why the cell pumps out the majority of the calcium and stores it in the endoplasmic reticulum until it is actually needed because if the calcium is allowed to exist, if lots of calcium is allowed to exist for long periods of time in the cytoplasm, that can cause protein precipitation. And so the intrinsically low levels of cytoplasm, of cytoplasmic calcium allows the cell to actually detect even the smallest changes of increases in calcium. And we'll see, we'll talk about the actual protein called calmodulin that is used to detect 
this increase in concentration of calcium. Now, let's move on to fact number two about calcium that makes it such a prevalent secondary messenger molecule. So, calcium ions interact strongly with proteins. Why? Well, calcium ions have a charge of positive, uh, positive two. And we know from Coulomb's law that the greater the charge is, the greater that interaction is, the greater that electrostatic force is. And so these calcium ions can basically locate the negatively charged side chain groups of proteins or they can even bind to the oxygen of the carbonyl groups found on the backbone of the protein and that can form strong interactions. And when those, once those interactions form, the calcium can induce conformational changes in the structure of the protein and that can bring the different domains in the protein together. It can basically expose important hydrophobic regions of the protein and that can allow that protein to interact with other proteins and that can stimulate many different types of reactions in the cell. So again, due to the positive charge, due to a positive charge of two, calcium ions can form strong interactions with the negatively charged side chain groups of proteins as well as the oxygen atoms on the carbonyl groups of the protein backbone. As a result of this, when calcium binds to proteins, it can cause conformational changes in the structure of the protein that can link different domains in the protein. It can expose, as we'll see in the case of calmodulin, hydrophobic regions, and that can be beneficial to that protein. So this can stimulate the activity of target proteins, target enzymes, target pumps, and so forth. Now let's take, a, let's take a look at this important molecule called calmodulin. Now calmodulin is actually a ubiquitous molecule and what that means is it's essentially found everywhere in all the cells and many different types of organisms. Now if we take a look at a small portion of the calmodulin, uh, cal this is what we see and this domain is known as the EF hand. And actually, it contains a few EF hands. So if you want to see the structure of calmodulin, uh, look it up on Google or in a textbook. It basically contains these EF hands. And the reason we call it a hand is because it kind of looks like this. Where this purple alpha helix is this structure here. This per a dark purple region is this structure. And this green section is my thumb. And so it kind of looks like a hand. And so this pocket here that is formed as a result of this loop, this loop, and this turn is basically where that calcium ion actually fits. And in fact, a single calcium or a single calmodulin can actually take up four calcium ions. And so these calmodulin proteins can actually be used by the cell to detect increase in calcium ion concentration. So if the calcium ion concentration increases to about five times of what it should be during steady, during steady state conditions, so from 100 nanometers to about 500 nanometers, these calmodulin proteins can begin to bind those calcium ions. Now once they bind the calcium ions, what happens next? Well, as soon as that calcium binds onto the calmodulin, as we saw in this particular discussion, it creates a conformational change in that calmodulin. And what that does is exposes crucial hydrophobic regions that weren't exposed before. And the exposure of these hydrophobic regions on calmodulin allows the calcium calmodulin complex to go, and, uh, to go on and bind to many important enzymes and affect the molecules. And one important enzyme, one important molecule that calmodulin binds to is the calmodulin dependent protein kinase, which basically depends on this complex here. So calcium being a secondary messenger, once it's released from the lumen and goes into the cytoplasm, it binds onto calmodulin and then it forms the calcium calmodulin complex, which is a stimulating complex because it goes on and binds onto the calmodulin dependent protein kinase, which is activated and then goes on to phosphorylate many different types of enzymes and that stimulates many different types of pathways. So, 
Calmodulin is a regulatory protein that is used to detect changes in calcium ion concentrations. If the cytoplasmic concentration of calcium ions raises to about 500 nanometers, so five times what it should be under steady state conditions, calmodulin will begin binding these calcium ions. And a signal calmodulin, because it contains a few of these, can actually bind four individual calcium ions. So one here, one here, and two here, which is not shown here. Now, upon binding, the calcium induces a structural change in the calmodulin that activates it, so it exposes these hydrophobic regions of calmodulin, which weren't exposed before, and now these, and now these hydrophobic regions can basically move on and interact with other proteins, stimulating those proteins and inducing many different types of processes inside the cell. So again, we see that calcium is a very important, very prevalent secondary messenger molecule because our cells have the ability to actually detect even the slightest changes in calcium as a result of this calmodulin. And number two, when calcium actually binds, it binds very well and creates these conformational changes that are able to actually activate proteins, enzymes, membrane pumps, channels, and many different types of molecules.